everyone, and welcome back to The Frame Channel. The retrieving and recycling of copper contained in end-of-life underwater cables, just like other metals, has seen great evolution in recent years. The process allows for the renewal of cables' copper components that otherwise have outlived their usefulness and are sometimes carelessly abandoned under the sea or in landfills. The various components of these cables lining the bottom of the oceans make them incredibly expensive. So, as technology advances and older lines are replaced by new ones, the retired subsea cables can still be very useful. And that is where salvage and recycling companies come in. However, recycling these cables is no easy task. First, they must be manually broken down into manageable sections using massive handheld cutters. Once small enough, the pieces of the cable are then fed through a special machine that removes the layers of rubber insulation, exposing the precious copper wires inside. Once harvested, this copper can then be recycled for use as new cables or inculcated in a wide variety of other products. In the United States, recycled copper accounts for a great percentage of copper products manufactured today. Each year, a total of around 8.5 million tons of copper is derived from recycling old scrap or end-of-life products and new scrap generated during manufacturing processes. Since copper refining is very damaging to the environment due to toxic emissions, recycling is considered both as a cost-saving and a planet-saving endeavor. Unfortunately, getting a hold of enough copper to meet manufacturing demands is proving harder and harder. This is mostly because people are unaware of the copper elements contained in the products they use every day when they choose to send them to the landfill rather than to proper recycling facilities. Recycling companies in advanced economies keep reiterating the importance of getting more scrap materials back to the recycling plants, especially in Europe. Recycling and reworking these scrap metals and cables actually helps to reproduce more cables that are further used in the generation and transmission of power and data of all sorts. That is the reason why, despite the giant strides the world has made in the area of satellite communication, around 99% of all international data is still transmitted by these massive submarine communication cables. In fact, it is estimated that there are some 550,000 miles worth of these high-tech cables in use around the world today. These cables, however, only have a lifespan of 25 years, after which they must be recycled, both for environmental reasons and for reuse. Furthermore, there has always been a constant outcry against the old landfill disposal methods for such non-biodegradable materials. Regardless of where the materials come from and how slow they may be incoming, the demand for new copper-based cables keeps growing. If anything, cables, wires, and other such elements are spreading fast where they used to be rare. This has been a huge booster to manufacturers all over the world. The largest such company is Japan's Furukawa Company, which has been around for over 140 years. An extremely diverse company, Furukawa produces industrial machinery, drill systems, electric wiring, and robotics through its various subsidiaries. 
The company has plants in many locations around the world, which allows it to better meet the vast global demand for its products. One of the largest facilities can be found in Mexico's Coahuila region. Currently, this factory is the leading global provider of magnet wire. This highly versatile copper cable is essential to a wide range of industries from automotive and industrial to construction, energy, and communications. Since it is relatively soft, copper wire can be created using an extrusion machine that forms it into the desired shapes and sizes. From here, it can be spooled based on the predetermined diameter and shipped off to other facilities all around the world to be incorporated into thousands of different products used in all spheres of life. As crucial as copper is to our world, there are some things it cannot do. This is because copper is soft and rather malleable when compared to other hard metals. Copper's susceptibility to corrosion has always been an issue of concern. It is also far more expensive than most other types of cables. So when a job calls for low cost and high strength, the solution is almost always steel. Unlike copper, this powerful iron and carbon alloy can support itself over long spans and provide additional reinforcement to cables and tubing that might otherwise fail. Thicker forms of steel wire are often used inside cement to ensure the structural integrity of buildings as well as the framework for other outstanding constructions. Steel wires are normally made of non-alloy carbon steel with a carbon content of up to 0.85%. Steel wires and cables start their journey as large coils of thin raw material. While strong enough on its own, it is far more useful when wound together into a coil. Before this can be accomplished, the wire must be scaled to remove unwanted surface deposits or impurities. Afterwards, the wire can be drawn, which involves it being lubricated and threaded through a die, which increases its length while reducing its diameter. From here, it is re-spooled, cleaned, and galvanized with a thin layer of zinc. Finally, the wire is coiled, packaged, and shipped. That's the end of today's feature on the frame. Subscribe to the channel to catch us on the next video.